it gives you the the sense of being in a space because you feel like you're in a capsule more than in an aircraft. You forget that you have no engine and you're just there. And it's real. It's not something on a TV or a, a show or, or, or a game or something. This is real adventure. On September 2nd last year, we flew the Perlin 2 to flight level 761, which is the highest flight ever flown in a winged airplane in a subsonic flight. A span of eight days, we were uh, able to break three altitude world records. And it's an amazing experience. You, you look outside and the sky is dark and everything down below you is really small. The view, of course, is awesome. You start seeing the curvature of the Earth fairly low, like 55, 54, 58,000 feet. If the weather supports it, it really has a lot of promise for this coming year. These high altitude flights are done in southern Argentina where the conditions are the best uh, in the world. This year we're planning to stay a little longer than we did in previous years. We're staying up to the 20th of September. So um, between beginning of August and 20th of September we'll be trying every day to go higher. In southern Argentina we have a phenomenon called the polar vortex which helps the mountain way go to very high altitude. So we now have the data we need so that the next time they go, they literally can go to, call it 70,000 feet right away without doing any more tests. As we're flying the airplane, we're gathering science data so that uh, researchers can better understand the atmosphere. I love the, the work we do because we always find something new. There's science that's going on that cannot be done any other way. It can't be done with a balloon. It can't be done with a power engine plane collecting air samples. And so with a better understanding of what's happening at 100,000 feet, we can give better weather predictions for people on the ground. The Perlin has the power to awe. We've proven that this airframe is safe now to, to attempt 90,000 feet. We're going to investigate other parts of, of the wave and we're going to bring some uh, new and exciting scientific experiments. We've also improved a lot of the instrumentation inside the glider measuring the positions of the controls, the forces the pilot's putting in. All of that data is going to be, be useful in the future. The systems that we have on the airplane to uh, look outside are tail cameras. We have two cameras and a vertical tail. And for this season, we've added a camera in the front of the wheel well, so we'll have three cameras. The systems on board this glider are much more complex than any other soaring glider ever built. It also, if you think about it, it's a great achievement because it, what it tells you about the performance of the aircraft is that it's the best performing aircraft in history. And that will allow future designs to be optimized, to use the energy that already exists in the atmosphere, not only in wave, but other methods that are out there, to allow for the fuel burn to be reduced and endurance to be increased. There's a lot of places left to explore, a lot of science to be done in a lot of different places and even if it's just to explore it and find out that it's there and come home, that's still a valuable contribution to the world's knowledge. <laughs>